So I want to explain to you the specific cue that is what caused my emotional brain to freak out. And that was whenever we brought on a new client to work with our to work with us for the business, the moment they signed that, you know, signed on the dotted line, I started freaking out. I started noting noticing myself getting anxious and anxious and I was ha- having a hard time focusing during the day. And then at nighttime it really just was a sort of cacophony of a terrible you know, orchestra of, of anxiety in, in my body where I just literally couldn't, couldn't fall asleep. And I didn't really understand the real reason for why I was freaking out so much. Uh, what, but I'll explain how I discovered that in part two of this guide. And see, my emotional brain was seeing connection from that point in time to the past. And I didn't know what it was. The weird thing was, you know, I wasn't on a sports team at the time. I wasn't wrestling. You know, the, the, the event had happened more than 10 years before. And actually, I never had an experience in business uh, or any, any time after that where someone felt like they hated me or that I had let them down in any way. We had pretty much received rave reviews from all of the stuff we'd done. So it was weird to me that I was having this freak out moment when we brought people on. Uh, but I noticed there was a similarity. And here's the similarity. Anytime I bring on a new client... It's an opportunity to let them down and for them to hate me. Now, a lot of people, when they when they see that, they would say, "God, Josh, that's totally crazy." Look at you know, look at the people you've worked with. None of them say that. They would try to point me to all the evidence for why that's an irrational, crazy belief. And actually, usually, when people work with changing your limiting beliefs, that's their tactic is to try to get you to see how irrational that belief is. But that really just doesn't work because it doesn't, it doesn't calm down the emotional brain. And, and actually, it's not irrational. It, it, the thing to understand about this is if you want to change your limiting beliefs, you can't look at them as irrational. That's the wrong approach to take. You have to look at them as there is something in my present moment right now that reminds me of a past negative experience that I need to discover. I don't need to push it down and to make it feel bad for being irrational. I need to discover it. And that's such a huge, important distinction to make. Now, something about my current reality now fits the story in the past. And it can be something as simple as, like in my emotional brain, oh, here's the cue. It's an opportunity that I might let them down and they might hate me. Okay, It had everything to do with that, that past pain that, that was stored in my body and the fear of it repeating itself too. So I just want to tell that story because think about how subtle that cue was. I didn't understand the impact that that one belief had on me because it lay dormant for such a long period of time. And actually, we have people who, who come to us who say, it's so weird to me that I'm a, I'm a high achiever and I'm really successful in all these different areas of my life, but uh, in this one particular area, I, I always tr- trip myself up and I sabotage myself. And we say, it's not weird to us because in that one particular area, your brain has a specific cue that your brain that, that is getting triggered to, to bring back up that old limiting belief and that old pain. And, and it doesn't get cued for whatever reason in these other areas, right? So that's a really important lesson to understand is, is what are the cues that that cause us to be reactive, to cause our limiting belief to come up and bite us in the butt, right? Or to cause it to react to it.